Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, I'm going to break down this story about how a backdoor potentially compromised one billion. Yeah, that's what the B billion devices. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So researchers from TarLogic Security have discovered an undocumented feature in the ESP32 microchip manufactured by Chinese company Espresif which could potentially act as a backdoor in over 1 billion devices. The ESP32 is a widely used chip for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity in IoT devices, making the implications of this discovery very significant. So the researchers found 29 undocumented commands in the ESP32 Bluetooth firmware that allow low-level control over Bluetooth functions. These hidden vendor-specific commands, like the opcode, enable the memory man manipulation, read slash write, RAM, and flash, the MAC address spoofing, the device impersonation, LMP slash LLCP packet injection. So the potential risks associated with these undocumented commands include spoofing of untrusted devices, unauthorized data access, pivoting to other devices on the network, establishing long-term persistence. So TarLogic researchers warn that malicious actors could exploit these hidden functionality to conduct impersonation attacks and permanently infect sensitive devices such as smartphones, computers, smart locks, and medical equipment. So this could potentially lead to unauthorized access to confidential information, personal and business conversations, and enable surveillance of individuals and corporations. So to address these concerns, TarLogic has developed uh, a tool called Bluetooth USB, which allows for security audits of Bluetooth devices across all operating systems. This tool aims to help manufacturers and cybersecurity experts protect various gadgets and technological equipment from potential attacks. Before I proceed, hit that subscribe button and the like button right now. If you're gaining value from this video and you got what you came here for, hit that subscribe button and the like button right now. So how you can check if your device is affected by this ESP32 backdoor, basically the issue is limited to ESP32 chips only. So the ESP32C, ESP32S, ESP32H series are not affected. So the undocumented commands are primarily debug features accessible through the HCI, the host controller interface, and do not constitute a traditional backdoor. For most users, these commands do not pose an additional security risk as they require privileged access to the device to be exploited. So if your device uses the ESP32 chip with a standard configuration, it's likely not vulnerable to remote exploitation through these commands. So to check if your device might be affected, identify if your device uses an ESP32 chip. If it uses newer series like ESP32C, ESP32S, or ESP32H, it's not affected. Check if your device's firmware is up to date. So ExpressFs is likely to release updates addressing this issue if necessary. If you're using a custom configuration that exposes the HCI interface externally, like the tunneling HCI over serial to a host computer, your device might be more vulnerable. Now, for, more, for most users, no immediate action is required. The risk is primarily theoretical and requires physical access or existing compromise of the device to exploit. Now, are there any unknown vulnerabilities in other popular IoT chips? Because they, they're coming out with all these, right? Yes, the answer is yes. So there are cell cellular IoT chips, so Qualcomm and MediaTek SOCs. Vulnerabilities like the CVE-2020-3657 and the CVE-2024-2008 affect Qualcomm's QC Map software suite and MediaTek's modems, enabling remote code execution, also known as RCE attacks. These vulnerabilities can compromise billions of devices, including vehicles and industrial systems via over-the-air, also known as OTA, attack vectors. We have the Telet Centurion modems, like vulnerabilities like the CVE-2023-4761, allow SMS-triggered RCE attacks affecting cellular-connected devices globally. 
we have the iot device firmware and update uh, mechanism so insecure update mechanisms many iot devices lack secure update protocols exposing them to unauthorized firmware updates or man in the middle attacks so this can lead to device hijacking data breaches and malware injections so outdated operating systems you know devices often run unsupported or outdated os versions leaving them vulnerable to known exploits you have default credentials and weak authentication like the mirai botnet legacy malware like the mirai exploits default usernames and passwords in iot devices to create botnets for distributed denial of service attacks also known as ddos attacks variants of mirai continue to target devices such as routers and cameras you have the trend net webcam so past vulnerabilities allow attackers to access live video feeds by exploiting weak authentication mechanisms use of insecure components so many iot devices rely on outdated or insecure third-party software components or libraries which can be exploited if not properly maintained or patched we have hardware specific vulnerabilities like weak hardware in some iot devices limit their ability to support secure protocols like encryption or strong authentication making them easier targets for attackers so that is what i have for you today when you clicked on this video if you got the information you were looking for if you gain value from this video if you want more videos like this in the future please take a moment right now to, and to do something free which is hit that subscribe button and the like and the like button once again do something free which is hit that like button and the subscribe button see you on the next video